Inside the birds is back. What's going on, everyone? Jeff Mosher, Adam Kaplan. And finally, Adam, we have a normal podcast. It's Friday morning, and we get to preview a game. you got the 6-7 and seven Philadelphia Eagles coming off a bye versus the 6-7 and seven ten Washington football team. I'm going to have to call them that for now, not because they haven't had a name yet, but also because the roster is going to be unrecognizable at some point. Uh, because of the COVID situation there, but they're six and seven coming off a loss against the Dallas Cowboys. And so it's a pivotal showdown for both, but you know, thank God we do the pregame show on Sunday because uh, this podcast preview will be a little bit difficult for us because of so much uncertainty um, at really key positions for both teams, for both the Eagles we'll get into and for Washington and this is going to be a really interesting week, not just for these two teams, Adam, but just for the entire league um, with the COVID situation really decimating a lot of, lot of, lot of rosters. Yeah, so the, so the theory is, I know people have asked me this, so I'm just checking into it. It's, mm-hmm. remember now, a COVID-19's variant is Omicron. It's still, it's still COVID, just a right. form of it. Right. right. So, right. Which, so what's happening is it, it's, it's, you know, it's around. And uh, Dr. Alan Sills, uh, the, you know, the, the, the guy who leads all of this for the NFL, was talking about that with the media uh, mm-hmm. at the, I think, around the owners meetings that was in Dallas this week. You know, they have the, the, late, the uh, late fall, early uh, winter one in December every year. And that that's a concern here. And it's not just, by the way, as bad as it's been in the NFL, well over 100 players have gone to the reserve COVID list this week. And plus some head coaches, some assistant coaches. We're seeing another sports are getting hit. NHL got hit. NBA's been getting hit. They've been, I don't know if you noticed that the, the NBA regularly has been getting hit just with, with because um, they have, you know, the, the 10-day mandatory absence. Mm-hmm. Um, so here, it's just all of a sudden, like, like unlike last year, we, we, it's been pretty good. Not many players up until a couple weeks ago, and this week has been absolutely insane, as you were talking about. No team hurt more. As of late Thursday, it was uh, 21 players went on the COVID list. And as you were alluding to, we may by Sunday have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten players come off of that list. And we'll update, we'll absolutely update that at 10 a.m. Eastern. That will lead off with that. Whatever updates we have, anyone who's gone on it, come off of it, how it impacts as we're going to discuss on this show. And boy, th- we could spend an hour on this. We don't have that kind of time. But how it impacts matchups is devastating for the Washington football team. It certainly is. And to your point on having guys who um, wa- certainly Washington hopes uh, can come back and get off the list in time for the game, there's also a potential of guys going on the list right up to game time, as we saw last week happen. I believe um, uh, with, uh, I forget who it was, but, uh, you know, a day, a night before the game, the, the, oh. teams, the Rams, right? Didn't they find out a couple of guys? Higby. That are, uh, yeah, Higby. Yeah. Actually, an hour. Sean McVay said an hour before the game. How the hell do you deal with that? So he explained, you know, how they navigated it. It's just, I guess, right now, if you're a head coach, you got to expect the expect the unexpected. And Kevin Stefanski now is is had this happen to him twice. He missed last year. They were oh, able to amazing. win yeah. against the Steelers. They actually blew out the Steelers. And his guy Mike Prefer is a special teams coach who was with him in Minnesota. He's taken over again for him. Uh, the the Bears, the head coach, both coordinators. It's just this is what we're dealing with in a COVID world. We are. All right. So we'll get into how those matchups are impacted. And, again, I think that's why we'll stress. Make sure you catch our Sunday show, 10 a.m. till noon, because we'll have the full report and we'll be able to maybe handicap some of the matchups a little bit differently if – some names are, and then not just with COVID, obviously the Eagles and their quarterback situation will have probably yeah. have more clarity on as oh, yeah. well. We All right, before we get into it, reminders to check out uh, both the Q&A show because they had some really good stuff uh, this week. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, talking a lot about kind of a big picture look at them at uh, both the offense and de- kind of like we did with the podcast. They took a big picture look at the offense and defense uh, going into this playoff push here. They talked a lot. Uh, about Jason Kelsey, um, just who is obviously nominated as the Eagles uh, candidate for Walter Payton Man of the Year. Got very emotional in his press conference about it the other day. Uh, Jason talked about being a teammate of of Jason – Jason Avant talked about being a teammate of Jason Kelsey's and the respect level there. Talked a lot about Jalen Rager 
Um, a lot of fans want Jalen Rager benched. Yeah. Uh, these guys see it differently as players. They just think that you got to keep when you have a guy like that um, and the situation where they where they don't have an obvious guy to keep playing. You know, they want they feel like he's just got to get more experience and more reps and continue to hammer it to make it work. I mean, there's a reason why that I'll let the viewers kind of watch. But um, and also, you know, they, they sort of agree and disagree a little bit on just the. Um, you know, the value of making the postseason and what it means now compared to what you know prior to the, having the seventh seed. So it was just a lot of really good stuff there in Q and A. You should check nice. it out. Oh, and Jason, um, the, he, we, he can't take a victory lap yet, but he uh, definitely addressed the people who came at him pretty hard mm-hmm. about his statement from the last show that he mm-hmm. feels the organization wants to uh, get a look at Gardner Minshew, and you know we'll was basically saying Jalen Hurts sit down because we want to see this guy. Now, obviously we have a similar situation here of some uncertainty that we'll get into. And Jason was just like, Hey, look, and Q backed him up on this. We see, he actually brought up and it was a really good analogy, even if it's not apples to apples of Carson Wentz in 2018 when he had the back injury and Carson didn't want to sit and Doug and the people above him said, Carson, you're injured. You got to sit, you know, and they played Nick Foles, and Nick led them back into the playoffs that year. And if Alshon Jeffrey doesn't drop that pass against mm-hmm. uh, the Saints in the second round and they go on to play the Rams, who knows what happens? They had the Rams number uh, early in Doug's career there. So um, it, it's a bunch of what ifs. But, but the bottom line was Carson, we know this, Carson wanted to play. He was not, you know, re- mm-hmm. he was not like, yeah, sure, sit me on the bench. You know, he, that's Carson, the way he was wired. But the organization made a decision that they felt was best for Carson but also best for the team uh, at the at the time. And I think that these, they're seeing some parallels to that right now as far as what's going on with the Eagles, a quarterback, which we'll get into. So make sure you check out q and It was a very enlightening show. And also, Adam, I, I loved our interview with Steven Nelson this week on ITB TV. thought it was really cool, very candid guy. So I would uh, encourage everybody to check that one out as well. Oh, by the way, you know, I, I uh, from what I understand, either he's done very little or no local media, I mean, he may have done a couple after he signed or his training camp earlier this season, but I know recently he they have you know because again they can't really get in front of anyone anyway. It's usually mm-hmm. you know certain players just speak every week. Yeah. So uh, someone in the local media told told me that who watched our show and said, "Hey, man, that's a good get for you guys." So, and, and and what I said to this guy was, uh, I thought Nelson was awesome with us. It was an education yep. in football. This is the typical thing that we look for, whether it's Joe Banner or or any of the ex-players or current players, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. with Avanti Maddox. We're looking to get inside of what they think of the team. And he gave four or five really good nuggets that were very understated. Well, if you listen to it, you go, wow, did he really just say that? He just gave you uh, some nuggets yep. that I was like, okay, I, I just, I'll I'll look at this for this when we watch the Eagles. So it, it, was, it, was, it was great. As you said, I agree with you. Awesome. All right. So check that out. Please check out InsideTheBirds.com. Continue to uh, subscribe to the RSS feed. The content is free. Uh, We're all doing some hard work there. Adam's power rankings were up. We talked about that. Uh, And also five-star reviews. We want to thank people. Uh, There's been uh, more on Apple lately. I checked it out the other day. Really thank you for all your great comments and continue. Please continue to help us out and leave us five-star reviews. If you leave a question, we always answer it, whether it's in the podcast or an Ask ITB session. We will get to it, and uh, we will continue to do so as long as you do that. So thank you for that. Um, let's get into the podcast. You know, we always start off with kind of injuries and, and transactions. And, of course, I always tell you about Deal Dash and the holiday season and why it's so important to get some things on Deal Dash at great prices, new things. You know, never purchased before things that you can get, whether it's for your house, your car, tools, anything you can get on Deal Dash. Uh, as long as you're just the type of person who likes to win because it's an online shopping platform that's fun. It's the longest running penny auction website and app around. And some of the things we talk about that you can get on Deal Dash are just too good to be true. Like a car going for $900, brand new TV, less than $2. So I've mentioned all the wonderful things, electronics, iPads, AirPods, whatever you want, you can get on Deal Dash at discount prices, but you got to win. So don't pay full retail price for things you want. Get on DealDash. Go to DealDash.com or download the app. And when you register, enter the promo code ITB for a special offer for some bonus free bids. Uh, Let's get in. Not too much transactional, Adam, but one thing that might 
come into play. Uh, Jack Anderson, who's kind of been a forgotten guy for the Eagles this year, just because he hasn't played in a game yet, was on uh, IR, right? I forget what he had even put him in IR, but he was uh, activated into the 21-day evaluation window this week. So he's still on IR. Yeah. Um, so he's not taking up a, a roster spot at the moment. Correct. But if the, you got to think going into this game, because you know right now it doesn't seem like Brandon Brooks is going to be yeah. uh, brought back and, and be able to play. You right. had Sua Opeta. You have Herbig probably starting right guard. So you have Opeta. You have Andre Dillard, and I guess you, you know they could have had Laraven Clark come up, but Jack, this guy Jack Anderson maybe goes back to being uh, another reserve there. Well, Clark is actually on the 53-man roster. All oh, right, they signed him. I forgot. Good point. Yeah, yeah. so they don't, yeah. they, don't, they don't really need to do anything with Anderson. Now, it's interesting. The Bills, talking to them, they really wanted to keep him. Mm -hmm. uh, they It was kind of one of these situations where they thought they could just bring him back uh, you know, next year and develop him as a backup guard center, one of their top backup guys. But the Eagles, you know, they saw something in him, and they just – the Eagles' history, as we've well chronicled, everybody knows this, they're just remarkable at plucking players off of waivers or signing undrafted free agents or developing other people's offensive linemen and making them either into good backups or or st sometimes starters, you never know. But Jack Anderson's a kid uh, who was a seventh rounder for the Bills uh, from mm -hmm. Texas Tech. He was on their practice squad. And... Now the Bills could have blocked him. They didn't, you know, to 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 what they were saying. I mean, they could have blocked him. They 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 tried to talk him out of leaving, but uh, he went to the Eagles, and uh, we'll see if he could develop into a lineman. Unfortunately, as you said, he got hurt, so um, you know he's obviously not going to contribute much this season. But right. maybe next year, um, depending on what happens with Brooks and Kelsey, um, maybe they find a, a role for him next year. Perhaps he will be in the mix, as we like to say. Uh, and that's really it from a transactional standpoint. We already mentioned earlier in the week that Quez Watkins and Jason Huntley were on the uh, COVID-19 reserve list. Um, as far as injuries and yes. the COVID-19 situation for both teams, let, let us start with the Eagles. All right. Um, people who have listened to us way back from the pregame show against the Jets, if you caught our show, you know we reported that Jalen Hurts uh, has the ankle injury, but there was pain that way he was feeling, or discomfort, I should say, uh, all the way from the ankle to the heel, to the point where, remember, it's his left ankle. For a quarterback, that's where you plant, right? Your back ankle, your right ankle is where you drive. But So it's a plant ankle that was giving him an issue, and he was having trouble, obviously, both running and throwing because of it. So uh, it's not that surprising to me that when after the bye, because we know with ankle injuries that even have a little bit more there, that they take a little bit. The, the high ankle can be two to four weeks, uh, and that's, you know, depending on who you are and what position you play. And is you it a high ankle? A lot. Is it a high ankle? It's been reported uh, nationally as a high ankle sprain. Oh, okay. But it's my right. understanding it's 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 severe enough that he's this week still feeling discomfort. Uh, I don't know if everybody saw the John Clark video. Uh, there was a video on, I want to say, Wednesday of him walking into the practice bubble, and he's got um, a, uh, like a hitch in his gait. Like, so, okay. you, know, you know, they're saying that he's splitting reps, or, or taking reps, you know, it's my understanding that um, at this point, it's kind of like last week where there, it's not a lot of reps. Now, I, maybe things change as the week goes on uh, mm -hmm. here. But right now, to me, it looks like he's got to show – I would think he'd have to show significant, significant progress to be able to start. Now, I'm not ruling that out, Yeah. right? And I think that they want to see it, and you could see it because we are now getting deep three weeks in, and we'll see. But – that it's it's sort of like the week before the Jets game to me, where they really hmm. can't be certain that he's going to be able to play on Sunday. Yeah, I would I would uh, a league source put him at uh, less than fifty fifty, which I call quote, very questionable. Yeah, and on your point, he needs to really improve with the rehab that he's doing on that left ankle. It's his plant ankle. It's mm -hmm. really got to get better. And you'd like to see him play through this as a young player. This is his first injury issue that he's gone through, and you like to see him play through it. And I, you know, you talk about that heel. Uh, yeah, that's that's because you don't want to be ginger as a right-handed quarterback with your plant leg. I understand you know, some people would say, well, it's better than his right ankle, okay, because you know you push off that. But as the plant, and then you roll your hips. If you're watching me on video, you got to roll those hips. That's that could that could be painful. So I would agree with your assessment. He's really got to make uh, uh, some decided uh, improvement here. Mm -hmm. And Miles Sanders with his ankle. 
Uh, Jordan Howard, the sprained knee. We, we know they're, they're, they're working their way back. Oh, uh, Jason Kelsey. So here's what we're told on Kelsey. Well, we know that he's no longer listed on the injury report with the knee issue. Right. It's now an ankle. He'll play. Uh, the previous knee issue, one source put as wear and tear. Uh, he had wear and tear on it last year. Mm-hmm. You know, it comes up when you're, you know, you're, when you're an older player, these things are going to happen, you know, where you just, you, whatever, ankle, knee, whatever the case may be. And he's now 34 years old, yeah. which he turned yeah. uh, last month. Uh, you, you're going to feel it. And that's that's what happened from what we understand. There's no structural damage with his knee. It's just was wear and tear. And right. He's got an ankle issue, but uh, he'll play. He will play. That is good news because uh, they need him. Obviously, he's been a, has had a great year. You do wonder with him. He, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about he's played so well that it's hard. If he if he wants to play next year, you got to figure out a way to get him. You, know, you could come back, redo the deal and everything. But every year, this guy plays through something. And uh, at the same time, you wonder if he just like how many years he wants to keep playing through something every year. I'm sure he's had that kind of mental discussion with himself over for the last few years, you know. Uh, about whether he wants to keep doing it or not, and he and he does. But at some point, he may say, "You know what? It's been great." But I remember Tiki Barber when he retired early. Not that mm-hmm. Jason Kelsey would be early, but Tiki Barber said, as a running back, he was smart enough to know that he had a finite number of tackles being tackled in him. A finite mm-hmm. number of hits is what he said, mm-hmm. where he just knew that. Even though his body felt really good at him, I, he, he said this directly uh, in a conference call with some, some Eagles reporters. I was there. Yeah. He said, even though his body felt great, he knew that he, he kind of, you know, how Tiki was very uh, cerebral and everything. He yeah. already he had kind of calculated in his mind how many hits he had taken as a running back who ran and caught wow. the ball a lot. And he knew that if he kept going, he would probably regret it because I think he used the words, I probably won't be able to stand up and play with my kids in two mm. or three years mm. because I pushed it too much. So it's really hard to do. It's hard to walk away from the game when you're in your prime like Tiki was or even with Kelsey, who's 34 but still plays at a high level. It's hard to say I'm done, even though I can still go out there and play at a really high level. But the smart guys, and Jason Kelsey's really smart, may have that stuff calculated in his mind. Malcolm Jenkins has also said similar things about him, and when he when he knows, he'll give it up. Interesting point on this. I remember Ron Jaworski. I was doing NFL Live with him uh, on ESPN many years ago, probably 2015, 2016. I don't know how he got this stat, but someone gave him a stat. He had the stat of how many times Cam Newton been hit, hit physically, sacked, and went to the ground, whether he was sacked or not, just how many hits he had taken. Right. And we both had said after hearing that he's not going to last much longer. Like he, it's going to start impacting his shoulder, right? Because that's where, because as you knew, he would run a lot and he get thrown to the ground or get sacked and run to the ground or get hit in the pocket. And it was yeah. this number where you go, oh, you felt bad for him. You were like, man, this is not good. And there you go. You would down the road, he would have major shoulder issues. Where Taylor Heineke, who we're going to talk about in a couple of minutes here, would, was mm-hmm. his third down long range quarterback uh, three years ago because. He couldn't throw the ball past 20 yards. So this is what happens uh, with players when they accumulate a bunch of hits over several years. And you, you, you as Tiki, I guess, said you're, as you're relaying, you hope that they could you – know, you hope that they could walk well because you, you it, it would pay me to see former players. I remember seeing uh, John Runyon, uh, who had major back issues, um, have to walk very slowly because he would play with back problems, and this is just what happens. Yeah, there, there, no, no doubt about it. It's uh... It's a tough game, man. It takes a toll on you, no doubt. Um, Brandon Brooks, we already talked about. Oh, about the running game for the Eagles. Yes. Um, I know on as of Thursday, Jordan Howard was limited and yeah. Miles Sanders was limited. So um, we'll, we'll kind of have to monitor. That's one of those things that we'll probably have a better update on Sunday in our pregame show. Yeah, for sure. Um, the fact that Jordan Howard is, remains limited, probably not great as far as the trajectory. Um, but Miles, yeah. we'll have to see. Well, with Sanders, yeah, the the issue may not be so much playing; it's lasting. Remember, he mm-hmm. limped off what that Jets game when he fit. When he was great in that game when you you'd see him on the sidelines limping heavily. Uh, reporters saw him after the game limping. That that's obviously concerning. I know this is two weeks later. You have your treatment, you you practice, you have treatment, and all that, but he's still limited. Mm-hmm. That's a legitimate limited. I mean, I, I yeah, teams play play. I mean, I've I've outlined the Patriots before. They play with the injury report. In fact. 
if you take one less rep than you normally would have, that's considered limited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the the for decades, the rarely, rarely would the Patriots list a player as full who was hurt. Now I know with Mac Jones, they listed him as full. Mm -hmm. Remember for, for years, they would have Tom Brady limited with the right shoulder. Right. It was right. ridiculous. Every week. Yeah. Right? Ridic exactly. Every week. Absolutely absurd. And the league would never do a damn thing about it, which would bother not just me or you, uh, other teams that are playing them, and the league would never do anything about it. That's right. Um, let's see. All right, moving on. Um, obviously, um, I think, you know, good news for uh, Boston Scott had that illness. He, I yeah. imagine he's all right. He's uh, off. Yeah, he's off the injury. with Devontae's off. Sweat's yep. good to go. Edwards yep. and Fletcher Cox. Correct. So let's get into Washington because uh, oh. there's a lot of names there. So even before I even get into Washington, I'll let you know. If you want to get an advantage over your sports book, download BetQL. It's the only app you'll need to make smart bets. They got a computer model scanning 350,000 Unique bets a year to give you the best bet recommendation for every game across all major sports. And the reason why you should place the bet, their model covers everything from spreads to over-unders and player prop bets. And if you don't like the model, you want to do the research yourself, BetQL's got the necessary tools for your research needs from sharp data to line movement, team summaries, lineup and injury breaking news, even the leaderboards to track your success. So go to the App Store or Google Play Store now to download BetQL. There's also a website, try.betql.co slash ITB. Just enter the discount code ITB at payment checkout for 25% off their subscription offerings. And check out their sportsbook offers page. If you live in one of the eligible states, you can claim free offers upon signing up at one of the many sportsbooks listed. So don't miss out on the chance to beat your sportsbook this football season using BetQL. All right, let's go through the names. Uh, we will right. start off. Um, with, well, let's let's let me, maybe we do it by position. Quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick, yep, so, out for the year, right? Yeah, he's done – Hip dislocation got hurt in week one. Taylor Heineke is not dealing with the knee issue anymore, as he said. It's not even listed. It's the right elbow injury. He seemed to indicate he's going to be okay. He's going to be fine. Well, he's taking the reps, the first team reps. So barring a setback, he should be cleared to go. Kyle right, Allen, right. his backup. Oh, no, on the COVID list. Uh, so Jordan Tayamu would probably be the bat, the number two quarterback this week who's on their practice squad if Allen is not cleared to come off that list. Mm-hmm. This is just, I mean, old uh, Jordan Tamu. <laughs> yeah, I think from Old Miss, am I not mistaken? I yes, think that's correct. I do remember him as a sort of a sleeper for the draft. Um, yeah. So the crazy thing with Heineke then, because uh, I saw this tweet from our buddy John Kime, works for ESPN, yeah. covers yeah. Washington. No, John Heineke Rowan. said yeah. that his elbow bothers him, but not when he's throwing. <laughs> Found that amazing. His elbow is sore because that's he rested. He, it's not uh, he said the elbow feels worse, but it's okay when he throws. So you just walk around pretending to throw footballs all day. <laughs> I don't it's know weird. That. Yeah. Oh, oh, you know who also could well I, he he would not I don't think he would be the backup if it all fails. But Pat Shermer's son, Kyle Shermer, is also on the practice squad, who yep. has kind of bounced around a little bit, uh, you know, trying to trying to get a job here. So Look, they're they're they they have to have Heineke playing. He's got to gut it out. We'll get into him as a matchup player. Yeah. Uh, running backs. Antonio Gibson will play with a shin fracture. He said this had this for two months. The guy's been amazing just to play through this. Yep. Uh, JD McKissick has not been cleared yet to practice coming off the concussion. Boy, that was bad a couple Monday nights ago. Yeah. Uh, although, I mean, he he did he did a little limited work last week. He hasn't done anything this week, so it's not looking good. And then Terry McLaurin, the mm -hmm. star receiver, did get some work in Thursday. Limited. He hasn't been cleared yet to play. So, boy, if he doesn't play, they're in dire straits. And then yeah. Curtis Samuel doesn't have the groin issue anymore, which he's had he had since June. He now has a hamstring issue, which has limited him, so they don't know if he's going to be able to play. Uh, Cam Sims, the big receiver, 6'5", who's been playing a lot lately because of injuries at the receiver position. Mm -hmm. uh, he's now on the COVID list. They don't know they're going to have him. Uh, they don't know what the receiver group is going to look like, but the one guy to look at is De'Ami Brown, who's not, who's a rookie they really like, who's not played a lot. Uh, so he may have to play a lot. Logan Thomas is done for the season, second time on IR. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be, um, it will be. Yeah, who's going to be a tight end for them? It's going to be. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. John it's John Bates. Bates. Yeah. John oh Bates. Gosh. Yeah, it's yeah. John Bates and Rick, Ricky Seals Jones as the pass catcher. Uh, Bates is the fourth round out of Boise, who is playing a lot, basically three down tight end because they don't have anyone else. And Ricky Seals Jones just came back last week from hip injury. Right. Now, offensive line. Okay, here's where they got problems. 
Oh, here is where they have – I wasn't the, just the running yeah, – the, right. the well, wide receiver the, running back and quarterback. Right, no, no, but here's the problem in terms of who's going to line up where because they don't know anything yet. Right. This is, they know very little about their offensive line. So Sam Cosme, the right tackle, the rookie, second uh-huh. rounder, he's coming back from IR. He's practicing this week with a hit, come back from a hip injury. They're hopeful. Uh, Wes Schreitzer, uh, one of their starting guards, got put on IR uh, last week, so he's done for a bit. Uh, Chase Roulet, their starting center, is done for the season, broken ankle. His backup, Tyler Larson, Achilles, COVID-19. They don't know if oh they're going to have God. him. And imagine, oh, imagine, I'm sorry. Imagine being Tyler God. Larson. You got an Achilles injury, and on top of that, you're on the COVID yeah. list? My yeah, goodness. exactly. I don't know how bad the Achilles is. But here's the problem now. This is what I mean about no, not knowing anything about where anyone's going to line up. They don't know. Uh-huh. Keith Ishmael went on the COVID list. He was going to start this week, I was told, at center. No longer the case. They don't know if he's going to clear. So... For, all right, uh, trivia question before I tell you. What former Eagle may be starting at center this week for the Washington football team? Former Eagle starting at center. Do they have Ross Piercerbacher? Because he came from Piercerbacher. There, oh, yeah. He was – yeah. You know, it's fun. Who's been with both teams? No. No? Oh, darn. It's um, former Eagle legend who signed as an undrafted free agent in 2017. Uh-huh. He's not the first guy with the same last name. Begins with a T. Then an O. Toth. Oh, is it it's, uh, John Toth or something? Or Toth. It... John Toth. Yes, John you got Toth. it. Yeah. yeah. Is, is it related to uh, Brett Toth? <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. But I forgot uh, John Toth, Toth was with the uh, with the Eagles. Yeah, he, he that was his first team. Then the Jets and the Browns oh, and the Lions and the God, Washington. What a disaster. Yeah, so, so they're down their fourth strike center, possibly. They don't know. Oh, my God. This is so what wait, I mean. The only it. healthy offensive lineman, then, is Scherf? Is that correct? And, and Flowers? Well, he's playing. Right. So Brandon Scherf is playing with this injury. He's had an MCL sprain for most of the season, but he's playing. Yeah, he's, you know, he, he's he missed not, time. He's playing well. Yeah. Uh, well, no, he's, he's playing better. Uh, Eric Flowers is actually – him and him and uh, Brandon Scherf, uh, Flowers and Scherf are the only, like, sure things this week. Oh, Charles Leno's back at left tackle. Oh, okay. Um, now, here's the problem. Cornelius Lucas, their top backup tackle, he's on the COVID list. Ugh. So, Sadiq Charles, who who didn't work out at left tackle, was overdrafted a little bit. He's He's got some talent, but um, he may have to start at right tackle. They don't know yet. So, they, they've got all sorts of hosts. Poor Scott Turner, their OC, he doesn't know – you know, uh, he goes, he talks to his coaches and they don't know who's going to play. So Jamil Douglas um, could play center. He's a center guard who I, I remember many, many years ago. Mm-hmm. He was drafted by the Dolphins. Yeah, Dolphins in 2015. He just he just got brought in. He was claimed from Buffalo. He may have to play. So they to, to round this out for Washington, they're an absolute mess on offense. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, Joey Sly Fox, Joey Sly, who they had, who's been a, sort of a young journeyman, uh, big leg, but inconsistent, who was with Ron and uh, Ron Rivera in Carolina. He mm-hmm. got put on IR a couple weeks ago. Then they're going with a rookie kicker um, who who they just brought in a couple weeks ago, Brian Johnson from the Bears practice squad. So they're an absolute mess on offense. If I'm if I'm Riverboat Ron and uh, this kid, Brian, what's his name? Brian what again? I forget. Uh, Is it Brian Anderson? The kicker? Uh, Brian, yeah. Brian Johnson. Brian, Brian, Brian Johnson. Not that finger his- from uh, – yeah, good. No, no, I know. If he misses his first PAT or some chip shot field goal on the first drive, that's it. I'm just going for two. I'm just, you know, if I <laughs> yeah. touchdowns, I'm going for two. If I'm yeah. in fourth down on the yeah. plus side of the field, I'm going for it. <laughs> so I just, you got to. Uh, I think you just have to at this point. All right. So, let's, uh, and we didn't yeah. even get through to the defense. We got to get to the defense. It's an absolute it. minefield. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go, go, go for it. Go for it. All right. I'll roll through these quickly. So, D tackle. <laughs> Jonathan Allen out, who's been unreal this season on a six He's played great. Matt Ioannis, their top backup tackle from Temple. He's mm-hmm. on the COVID list as well. Tim Settle on the COVID list as well, one of their top backups as well. He's good too, uh, yeah. So when we talk about matchups, we'll talk about who's feeling. And Chase Young out for the season at DN. ACL, Mata Sweat, broken jaw surgery. He probably would be available this week if he were if he happened not to be on the COVID list. Mm-hmm. Uh, James Smith-Williams, who they like, who's been a top backup DN. He's on the COVID list. Um at, we talked about this on our, la- our Wednesday morning show. John Bosick, who was a starting middle linebacker f- at the beginning of the season, he's done for the season torn pectoral muscle. His backup, David Mayo, who they know from Carolina, he's now out on the COVID list. At corner, Kenneth Fuller, COVID list. Ben St. Juice, who they like. I know Greg Cosell really likes him, tall kid. Second yeah. time with concussion problems, put on IR. And this one happened late Thursday. This sucks for them. 
Cameron Curl, uh, who's been a great story as a seventh round pick at safety because they play a lot of big nickel. Right. He's on the COVID list now. So I, I mean, if I'm Jack Del Rio, who's turned around their defense after a horrific start, this impacts everything that they do. It's re- it really sucks for them. Yeah, it really it's awful. Um, I don't even. I mean, you just hope between the time people hear this and Sunday, they get some healthy guys because I don't know how they're going to be able to play a game if they lose too many well, more people. It becomes a player safety issue. Yeah. Well, here's what you do though. This is what when I, I remember talking to the league about this last year. This is when this is actually before the season started. They said, "A, we're playing the season no matter what." Right. This is why expanding practice squads to 16. I remember one person saying, this is funny. He goes, listen, if a team has a safety, they have to play corner if they're down all these corners. A linebacker, it would have to line up a defensive end if you have to. Or a D and a D, a D tackle if you have to. That's He goes, this, this guy said it's clearly on them. Fast forward to this season, the league made it very clear this is on the clubs. So they have a 16-man practice squad. They have a former Eagle, Gabe Wright, at D tackle. If they got to play him, at, if he's got to start. Oh, another former Eagle. Mark and Michelle at wide receiver, another former Eagle, Wendell Smallwood on their on their roster. So it's guess like a what? Preseason game. Yeah, it's bad. Now, now on your point, now I agree with this. This sucks for fans to watch this. Now, some fans will say, "Hey, who cares if my Eagles win?" Now, I don't care if they're lining up, uh, you know, fifty retired guys. And I get that sentiment, but from a watching standpoint, don't you want it to be a good game? Eh. I, I would so, think so. Yeah, I would think so. Some, you want to win as a win, right? So that's uh, yeah, it for all win, years. But yeah, yeah, that yeah. that's crazy. I mean, that front seven is absolutely decimated. And honestly, as a observer here, it would be nice yeah. if Washington could get a few of these guys back uh, with two positive. Te- I mean, two negative tests um, before the the game for kickoff. Yeah. Just, I'm just, sure they will, right? I'm sure yeah. they'll couple, you know, a handful. I'm, of I'm looking, I'm, yeah, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, uh, you know. It, the number is large, but it, the, the number of starters per se isn't as big. Just they seem to be clustered in certain areas. So, like, you know, it's not like Washington can't field a decent team or, or do all right. I mean, their secondary they you know, like they still have William Jackson. They still have Landon yep. Collins. They still have got yep. their rookie, Jamin Davis. And they've got Deron Payne, who's a really good defensive tackle, too. Shaka yeah. Tony will get some more reps. He's a good, good Penn State. Penn State. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they got their starting quarterback and running back. So, it's like it's not – it's still, it's, I'm, I'm, I, I guess you. I'm trying to polish a, a you know, a, whatever they say, or put lipstick on a pig here, but uh, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's not a great situation, but it's not like ever, it's not like a real preseason game where the starters, all starters don't play. It's just sort well, of, well, it's going to be areas, as you said. There's some areas where the Eagles absolutely have an advantage and they just have to figure it out. Yeah. But of course, and they'll adjust on the fly if, if, uh, whatever reports come out Sunday, and then obviously when the inactives come in 90 minutes before the game, they'll go, okay, well, here's how we're going to adjust. So it's probably you want to get this started on the Eagles offense versus the Washington. Yeah, Eagles. yeah, we'll get started on the matchups. Football fans, I'm sure we all love an action packed, high scoring NFL game, but with the latest no brainer from DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner in the NFL, you'll be a winner once a single point is scored. New customers who bet just $1 on any NFL team to score can win $100 in free bets. It's just that simple. DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also get skin in the game with new same-game parlays. You just combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, the more money you can win. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. And best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code ITB. Bet a dollar on any NFL team to score and win $100 in free bets. They score, you score with promo code ITB this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Got to be 21 or older. Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com. So I sportsbook for details. Gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right. Let us get into the uh, offense versus defense here. Um, I, I guess it really, to me, Adam, like whether you're starting Gardner Minshew, Jalen Hurts, or Reed Sinet, you're going to run the ball. Doesn't really matter. Reed Sinet. Oh Reed my Sinet. goodness! Gracious. Pull that yeah. one out there, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the, there's. Oh yeah. For, for two reasons: one, you do that really well anyway. That's your bread and butter. Two, you got a defense over there. They may have like be down seven linemen. I mean, well, you just run, run, run. Be here's the, here's the question for Jack Del Rio because you know they they've turned their defense around. I I remember yeah. from a really good source from a, a team that played Washington. We watched their um, defensive tape. This is probably the first five or six weeks. He goes. He goes. He could not believe how bad Del Rio's defense was and used the term non-competitive. 
Mm -hmm. They were mentally, the Chase Young wasn't playing well. They were not playing their gaps correctly. They're playing what's called hero ball. Yep. Not playing their gap. They were trying to do someone else's job. And it was, that's why they were struggling so badly. And they were playing so, it was kind of like what Spags did with the uh, Kansas City defense, where the, both teams were playing so much man coverage. Yeah. Well, Del Rio is going with so much zone now. They're nearly 80% zone coverage. They play a lot of five-man front. That's why they're really good against the run. They're giving a, about four yards per carry, technically 3.99 yards per carry against running backs. Right. So it's hard to run against them. Now, not this will stop the Eagles because, you know, you, you just double team. You find areas where you think you can win. And as you were saying, you make a great point. They'll find a, a window to run because – they're, Washington's going to be missing some players on the D line. It's just how many. We'll see if any come back for Sunday. See see anyone who's activated. Right. But to me, you don't change your identity. You know they play a lot of zone. You know they're going to play with a five man front because this is what they've done. Although they could change it if they don't have a lot of linemen. That's actually a good point. Well, they go from that five two because they go with um, they go with the the, the three safety alignment and and, and a five front. Mm -hmm. The question is, will they go back to a forty three, which is their base? Earlier this season, but they've they're several weeks of their heavy five two. So I don't know. It's 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 uh it it's a challenge because you don't know if you're Nick Sirianni and staff who exactly you're looking at, but you know this: your identity is running the football, and you run the hell out of them no matter who you're going up against. Yeah, no doubt about it. And like um, you know, when you play zone, you need a, a good pass rush uh, to you know compensate for the fact that you're in zone and not blitzing. And we'll see how that impacts them but really against the run like a guy like Ch Shaka Tony a uh, good explosive pass rusher probably best as a situational pass rusher I, I don't know what his weight is lately uh, you know I, I know at Penn State he was kind of an undersized pass rusher so he's a guy who if he has to start at defensive end you want to probably try to capitalize uh, on that and, and maybe run his way a little bit he's, he's got to be under 250 I mean I you know I think he was around 235 240 at Penn State so yeah uh, he was he he was drafted at, or not drafted, but other teams saw him as a stand up outside linebacker in a thirty four. Right. Washington used to play before Del Rio got there. So you make a good point. I I that's what I mean about picking selected matchups. You go okay, we're going to go with this guy. If they want to play the five man front, great. Well, we see right. where our line. We're going to run. We're going to double team this kid. We're going to blow him off the off the line because he's smart. Great point. So. Right. Um, yeah, to me, they've got an advantage here. Uh, they're they're going to find an advantage here. I, I understand Washington's one of the better run defenses. The way you win against them, you typically pass, and they'll find their matchups mm -hmm. uh, to do that. But uh, with, now, as you said earlier here, we don't know right now as Friday morning who's definitely going to play. The Eagles could have up to four running backs available. They can only have two. Yep. Uh, so whatever they do, it's going to be with, it's, it, they're going to play to their, their identity. There's no question about that. Yeah. I mean, look, if, if it just so happens to be that your running backs are Boston Scott and um, you know, let's say Howard Gamewell. can play and who would, who would the other one be? I, I, well, I well, game, well, if the two, Gamewell, guys, right? let's say, yeah, let's say the top two guys are out and it's Gamewell and Scott, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Your offensive line should be able to reset the line of scrimmage and open up holes. These are you know good guys who have filled in and shown that they can run the ball well. So, I mean, yeah, you may not have the home run element that you have with, with Sanders or that power element with Howard, but it shouldn't really matter um, based on the matchups as, as we're talking about. You should be able to run the ball, Action. do it well. Yeah. And also, honestly, it should be another good game for regardless of who starts quarterback, but if it is Minshew, it should be a good game for Dallas Goddard. You mentioned Cam Curl being out. He's a really good safety, uh, great find by them. Mm. Um, yeah. With him out, you know, Landon Collins, not a great coverage safety. We've known that for a while. Dallas Goddard should be able to attack these seams. He really and, should. And yes. If, if, even if Carl comes back, they've given up production. Like they, 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 the one issue they have, and I, I'm sure it's because they're so good against the run. Mm -hmm. Landon, Landon Collins is a box safety. He doesn't, his issue, that was such a bad contract that they did. Great yeah. for the agent, but you, you got to throw, like, you, you're going to get matchups, okay? Like, there are going to be some matchups where you go, okay, I understand tight end, they're better than average covering them, but at receiver, they've got one guy who's shut, who not a shutdown corner, but he's good, is William Jackson. Mm -hmm. With with um, Kendall Fuller on the COVID list, you're going to have some matchups that favor you. And you you and again, that everyone seems to throw against, the throw on the other side. I mentioned Ben St. Juice is out as well. He's yeah, on IR yeah. with yep. multiple concussions. So you you got to... They give a lot of production to slot receivers and outside receivers. You got to take advantage of those matchups when you throw.
Yeah, and then look, you have to think William Jackson will see a lot of Devontae Smith. So there, the door will be open. Oh, they play a lot of zones, so I don't oh, that, know. I that's don't know true. That. That's true. Um, but if you're all right, so then you'll you would try to move Devontae around a little bit to get him off mm-hmm. William Jackson. But it's still yep. there will be times where Jalen Rager probably has a decent matchup on the outside uh, against whoever fills in for St. Juice. So it's a, mm-hmm. it's a matchup you'd like to see him be able to capitalize and, and the whole team be able to take advantage of. And by the way, protection should be great too. I mean, I know again, Tony can rush the passer, uh, rush the passer. Uh, Deron Payne can can cause life to be difficult in the middle there, but I mean, uh, you know, compared to what they're missing, it really this Eagles offensive line should have no problem. They're playing. The only thing kid. that might make it problematic is the weird thing that it's a division game and sometimes crazy things happen. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, they're, but, they're playing a kid. They're playing mm-hmm. a kid who's an undrafted free agent uh, from Old Dominion. It's not exactly a football school, um, but you're going to see him rot- uh, R O T I M I. Rotimi, Rotimi right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was signed off their practice squad. He's been playing. He's had to play because they don't have anyone left. Mm-hmm. And if this, when this guy's on the field, I'm running right at him. This is sure. what they, they have to identify. When these guys who shouldn't be playing are playing, th- this is what it's all about on, on match. I've been doing advance when the Eagles – I'm sure when the Eagles pro staff saw that, they, they know this, the, 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 uh, the, these, these, whoever was assigned this team. They have mm-hmm. to know, like this is a guy when he's on the field. I'm running right at him because this has been the this has been this last two months the story of this Eagles turnaround in their offense. And you were saying it earlier, and you're so right. It doesn't matter who they play; find the matchups and go win them. Because no, they're but another thing, no one to stop them running the football. Not one team. It's no, no. In, in fact, if you really want to, like you know, take advantage of it, like you should. I mean, and Minshew plays well, even with Hurts because they've done it. I mean, go go mm-hmm. under center. You know, get a third tight end out there, a second tight end, run some power, you know, gap, just pound him right up the middle. And, and and again, I would actually consider coming out of the game in no huddle. I would just really? run it. I would come out in no huddle and just run, run, set up short pass. Because I'm trying to – if I can wear these guys out and make them tired, they got nobody that they can sub into the game. <laughs> That's true. Rotate. Yeah, I know. It's actually – yeah, it's true. I mean, it almost sounds like – it almost sounds like like a bullying type thing to do, but, I mean, I, you got to win a game. They're playing the game. You got to win a game. <laughs> I mean, you may see folks who really follow the NFL might remember Nate Orchard, who was a draft pick of many years ago for the Browns. Yes. Who's been around forever uh, since 2015. He's been on about eight teams. He may have to dress because they're running out of players. So, there, if – to me – I, I suspect it's going to be Gardner Minshew, but like you said earlier, if it unless Hurts makes significant progress, mm-hmm. if it is Minshew or if it's Hurts, I'm still running the ball 35 to 40 times. Uh, that to me is where this thing is going to be win. And when you throw it again by matchups, by formation, you got to find those matchups that you like, as you outlined earlier. Other than William Jackson, they don't have a good corner who's probably going to be on the field. So um, I, I, I would win. And that, that's, I agree. That's kind of the offensive way that I see it. Yeah, there you go. All right, I mean, they really it should should not be difficult for them. All right, let's move on to the defense. First, we're going to tell you about our friends at phlsportsnation.com. They are enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams. They're for the fan, by the fan. That's their motto. So make sure you check out all their great work at phlsportsnation.com and on Twitter at phlsportsnation. Let's pause real quick for a word from our other great sponsors, including our friends at Sky Motor Cars. All right, if you do check out our friends at Sky Motor Cars out there in Westchester, PA, make sure you tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You will get a great deal. All right, the Eagles defense versus this Washington offense. Um, by the way, did you say that the uh, third tackle there, uh, uh, whatever his, his last name, Botimi, he's from ODU, right? Yes. Botimi? Yeah, Isn't that also that. where Taylor Heineke went to school? I believe so. Yes. Also where Travis Fulgham went to school, right? I, Fulgham, I remember, yes. And Heineke it's a powerhouse now, man. It's weird because <laughs> I grew up with ODU. ODU is a ladies, a very good ladies program, I think. Yeah. And it, it, it's on basketball. Basketball. And, right. and uh, you know, men's too. I, I didn't even know they had a football team about, until about four or five years ago. Actually, what should I say? I mean, let, let me say it this way. When I saw Taylor Heineke the, at the East-West Shrine game, and we might as well start with him because seeing him throw the ball, I was like, there's no way this guy's going to make it. He had funky delivery, mm-hmm. unorthodox. But the thing I did notice, and this is they, they've now moved the um, they've now moved it to Vegas. 
mm-hmm. to coincide with um, the Pro Bowl. This is when it would be in Tampa. And you get really close. You could stand on the field and watch. And I'm like, this guy, th- th- who is this guy? This is, this is not going to work. Right. Here we are five years later, the guy. I, this, what a great story. I, I free to admit that I was wrong. I missed on this guy badly. This is – never would have believed it. I mean, he wasn't drafted. I mean, uh, you know, I was right about that. But I cannot believe he's made it. This is a remarkable story. And i got to give Scott Turner credit. Yeah. I ran into Scott two or three times over the years about this kid. And he, he – just brags on him. He was right. Uh, well, everyone was wrong. So many personal people I talked to said, no way this kid makes it. Right. And uh, he's now 28 years old, undrafted free agent out of 2015 with the Vikings, then with the Patriots and the Texans and the Panthers, and now with Washington coming off the couch. Remember, they signed him off the couch. <laughs> it's amazing. And he almost beat the Bucks. I tell you, I remember that watching that game and being really impressed. Also thinking like, you know, I mean, it's sort of like you see this every once in a while. A guy just comes in and plays great and fans love it. But then when he plays for an extended period of time, you realize eh, maybe, you know, that doesn't last very long. I've been right. impressed this year. I mean, of course, I think Washington will still look to upgrade. Right. But yeah. I have been impressed with his consistency, his competitiveness. I, he actually he and Jalen Hurts are to me like cut from the same cloth. I mean, they have different pedigrees, certainly. I'm not trying to compare their college backgrounds. And one obviously was a second round pick compared to Heineke, but they're just the way they're what's in their DNA when they're out on the field, they will their teams as best as they can. Uh, maybe not the greatest arms or greatest throwers, but they're crafty. You know, they'll Tough. run around, they'll extend yeah. plays. I bet you every time the defensive coordinator turns on the tape, it's like you think you've got some advantages, but then you kind of that, then you see things that you just can't coach against, right? That are really difficult. The, the second Great reaction, point. things yep. like that. He's a gnat. I mean, and I mean that in a good way. He just he doesn't because he doesn't give up, and he always makes really strange, awkward throws that you think are mm-hmm. bad, but then they get completed. So I mean, I <laughs> right. you know yeah, right. I think it's 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 kind of well, cool. He, he, he in that if you're because it's interesting as we break this Eagles defense down. One of the surprising things in, in, in um, their change is their coverage. The Eagles are going between 35 to 40% man coverage of late. Mm-hmm. That's like shocking. They, they, yeah. they led the NFL for the first eight weeks, seven, eight weeks in, in zone coverage, about 91%. Right. I, I still would say that it has to do with because Gannon's more comfortable with his players. It, that that's, has to be the reason why because he, he has more trust in them. Um, they're not getting burned, by the way. They're still – They'll, they'll play their too deep coverage. The, the bottom line is they're not get, they're not getting beat. It shows a, a, a trust in his players, and I give Gannon credit. I didn't think he'd do it. Yeah, I mean, I think I'd say it's 75 to 80% more trust in his players, and on a little 15 to 20%, I had to do something different also. Okay. But obviously, if you didn't trust your players, you wouldn't do it, right? But at sure. the same point, I think he may have just started doing some things not knowing if he could trust them or not, but saying, like, I got to blitz Alex Singleton at my dime linebacker and see what, just to, just to mix it up. I got to leave Steve Nelson on an island every once in a while and blitz uh, a safety, even though I don't love Steven Nelson on an island sometimes because this quarterback needs to get rattled a little bit. So that's, so it's, it's almost like, yes, I agree with you that he saw some things work and he's done that, but sometimes because he, goes back into a shell. I don't know that he has complete trust. I think he just feels like there are certain times he just has to do it to, okay. to get a better result. Okay. Uh, if that makes on sense. Heineke, yeah. yeah, it does. I get you. On, on Heideke, uh, here's the, the book on him from a league source. Very aggressive throw. Doesn't give up plays. Athletic, tough. Will make throws. Mm-hmm. Will to make any throw. Great, very quick feet. He will make unblocked defenders miss. So that's why you see him, as you were talking about, when the pocket breaks down, he'll yeah. take off. Yep. Like he and you were just talking about this at the Bucks game when when they almost pulled off the upset in the playoffs in the wild card round. Mm-hmm. He ran so well; they were not prepared for this because they didn't have any tape, extensive tape like this. Right. He was outrunning them. He's got. He's. Uh, I, I. I have to check. I think he ran in four fives and four sixes in the forty. Hmm. For quarterback is obviously very good. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's – Haneke's fun. I, I'm looking forward to seeing how they play him. Now, the Cowboys beat the bleep out of him last week. Uh, they they got him. Uh, your guy Parsons was a man, and they beat up their offensive line. And they 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 took it they, – they just beat them up physically. And I'll, I'll be interested to see what Ga- how Gannon views that tape. Um, at running back, you know, it's all about Antonio Gibson. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, McKiska has not been cleared yet. So Jared Patterson uh, and Wendell Smallwood will, will most likely be the backups again. Right. Gibson's been they've been one of the big reasons for the turnaround before this loss when the four game winning streak is they decided to hand the, the the offense over to Gibson in terms of the run game, not ask Heineke to win every game, unlike right. last week where they had to. But Gibson has been very effective up to last week. He, he's handled way more volume. Uh, it, 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 I give him credit. This is the kid as uh, Ryan Silverfield, the Memphis head coach, told us came mm-hmm. in as a slot receiver, 235 pounds, and they made him a running back in his last year or so. And uh, he's learning, but he's doing a good job. And that's uh, I, Now, the Eagles' run defense, by the way, is really significantly improved. I would be very surprised if they struggle against him just because I, I do believe their D-line matches up well. Yeah, well, they gave up an occasional 7-10 to yard carry, yeah. Yeah, I agree. If I had Antonio Gibson in my fantasy league, which I do in one of them, I wouldn't play him, him, which I'm not doing. I would I not have play a choice. Him. Oh, you got another I, choice? I don't because, have a choice. Yeah, I mean, I don't think – first of all, if McKissick does play, um, he catches yeah. more passes. They tend to rely on him to catch yeah. passes. And secondly sure. – as you're right that they've leaned on him to stabilize the running game, and he's done well given that he's playing through a shin fracture. But if yeah. you really boil it down, he's averaging 3.9 a carry. It's not like he's been dominant. He's okay. just been I high know. volume uh, yep. runner. So, and, and look, I do think the world of him. I think when he's healthy and next year when they've maybe got a different line and quarterback, and met, he, he'll be really good. But he's just right now a high volume ball carrier, and I don't. I think he's going to be running into a brick wall. <laughs> on Sunday, so I don't. I hear I don't you. Think, I, got I don't you. think it's going to be uh, a very good game for him. I could yeah, be wrong, fact, but we'll see. I probably run blitz him and make Heineke beat me. Uh, all right. So at receiver for Washington, we mentioned earlier, Deami Brown might have to play a lot. They don't know yet, and yet another former Eagle angle. Remember DeAndre <laughs> Carter? Yep. Remember DeAndre Carter? Yes, I do. I remember him. He may play people, a lot. People were big mad when the Eagles cut him, man. Yep. Yeah, and they were probably right on that one because we, we we go back to the Henry Josie laugh. That was the man. He was the that was the most venom I think Chip Kelly ever received from the fans in terms of them cutting a player. Yeah. Um, but this one was yeah. Th- this one was a guy that you know flashed some years ago with the Eagles. He's he's bounced around a lot, Texans and some other teams, but uh, he may have to play a lot. And, and Antonio Gandy Golder doesn't play at all. You might remember him from Liberty. Liberty. Yeah. Uh, he's just an active. Yeah. Or, he, he's an active every week. He may have to play. So they, again, we don't know until we, till they know who's going to be available. That's right. I mean, that's so, so the really, I don't think Jonathan Gannon's going to blitz a whole lot. I think he's going to feel like his front four should dominate the line of scrimmage. And if he can drop seven and make uh, the runner, uh, the running quarterback there, uh, Heineke have to throw into windows to guys like, and again, McLaurin, we don't know right now if he's going to play. If there's no McLaurin, he's basically going to be throwing, to you know, Diami Brown and uh, DeAndre Carter and Antonio Gandy Golden. So I'll take my chances that my defense can can defend that pretty well, and that my front four rush will get him moving and uncomfortable. So I would be very surprised if Jonathan Gannon came out of the gates uh, rushing the quarterback um, with more than just four. Hmm. So, but we'll see. Oh, and then there's Adam Humphreys. He's a pretty good slot receiver who was yeah, with um, he was yeah he was with Fitzpatrick in Tampa. But I don't, I don't worry about him. There, there's no. so many advantages here for the Eagles, you know. They're, they're yeah, just they'll far. let Humphreys catch 10 balls for 80 yards. They'll have no problem with that. Just keep everything right. in front. Right, good point. Yeah, yep. they'll, they'll be fine I'm with, with you. that. Yep. Uh, and then, finally, we mentioned the, the Washington offensive line with, through the injuries and the COVID issue. Um, Charles Leno, I remember talking to the Bears. They didn't want him. They thought he was – they thought, in fact, if they kept him, they would have to keep a tight end in just to help him because he wasn't moving well last year. He's kind of revived his career. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're they're struggling now at right tackle and center, and they just because they don't know as we speak here Friday morning they don't know who's going to line up there. So once again, as you've said many times, it just so happens the Eagles get these advantages. But as we saw against the Chargers with the right side of their offensive line mm-hmm. and the problems the Giants had on their offensive line, they didn't always take advantage. That is true. That is true. Now, this is a whole different animal. This is like more than yeah. just the uh, – this is like the red carpet being rolled out for them. Um, what do you think the line is on DraftKings? Have you, have you peeked oh, at it? Or can I give you a good no, quiz? No, I would guess. I'm going to – because I'm it, it, I'm 50-50 with getting these right. I, I have no idea. I would guess because of – see, I'm using logic here with all the issues. Mm-hmm. I know you guys are a bad home team. 
they're one and four, one or four. They have only their last game they played at home. They beat the, the Saints, but right. I would say Eagles are four, uh, minus four. Really? Wow, you're concerned. I mean, look how many guys are out for it's nine and a half. Well, see, the Eagles are favored by nine and a half. Oh my God. Yes. Oh, you know why? Because they don't know if. Okay, here's why. Because they don't know if Heineke's playing or not. I'm sure they wow. take that into account. I mean, but they're even nine and a half with not even knowing who the Eagles' starting quarterback is. So that's if, true. If yeah. Wow. Named, I, I'm but... glad I don't make lines. I personally, if you and I were making a line, I would make it minus six. Uh huh. I was just being conservative, but I would make it minus six. That would be my personal line because of all their issues. Uh-huh. My problem is Eagles are a bad home team. We know this team like no other. They they don't take advantage always with their matchups. We know who they are. They're not they, now. Obviously, if they force a lot of turnovers, which could happen, um, they could get the ball and, and plus territory and and maybe score over thirty points. But I still think, and we'll get to the score in a second. I just these team right when you think you know them, they they fool you and go oh, another one I got wrong. I thought I saw it. It was obvious. Nope, it wasn't yeah, obvious. That. All right, time of reckoning. What's the score going to be? Right. Because we have no idea who's – who's we don't know about Hurts. I suspect it's going to be Minshew. Obviously, I don't – to make be clear, I don't know it as a fact yet. It's only Friday mm-hmm. morning. Mm-hmm. Though I think you would – you and I, if we were being honest here, we, we kind of knew the Friday before the game it was going to be Minshew uh, based on what we were hearing. This time it's, it's a little different um, because we have a little bit more information, as you were saying, that you know about the heel. You know, the heel's a little bit of an issue. But with modern science and healing and – Toughness, which this kid's pretty tough. You know, you can't rule him out mm-hmm. until we see the injury report later today. Uh, we'll see. I'm going to pick it 17 13 Eagles. Wow, a tight one. That's a, I almost think the Eagles should be embarrassed if they only win. So I know well, it's a division look, game. Though, look, but, so you never in know. In 2017, happen, yeah. the Eagles would blow this team out. This is not a Super Bowl winning team here. <laughs> That's true. They don't always take advantage of matchups. Sorry. I originally had in my mind something like 31 to 13 Eagles. Wow. Um, but because it's a division, if the, if, the, if Washington was a team they played every once in a while and not in the division, I would still stick with that. But because it's the division game and wacky stuff happens, I mm-hmm. narrowed it to 27 16 Eagles, an 11 point okay. win. By 11. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, the over under on that, according to DraftKings, is 44. So both of us are going under. Oh, You're going under, I'm going one yeah. point okay. under. All right, we will wrap up the entire game, or recap, I'm sorry, preview and recap. But most importantly, we'll preview it first on Sunday from 10 a.m. till noon. Greg Cosell, Jason Avant will join us. It'll be a lot more informative. We'll go through all the great matchups. You know where to catch it on our YouTube channel. It starts at 10 a.m. We look forward to seeing everybody there after last week's off. So uh, that'll be it for this edition of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. Big thanks to our producer, Hunter Brody. You can check out his uh, work on YouTube. His sports, his uh, channel is called Sports Talk with Broads and his Twitter account at Broads81. And of course, his website is BroadsMedia.com. And as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the birds.